I see a lot of tech reviewers criticize AMD and Nvidia for having the same tier graphics card targeting the same resolution while gaming over multiple generations. Do you think this is fair given that games are constantly getting more graphically demanding to accommodate the new hardware? Do you think games are getting graphically demanding at a rate, a faster rate than GPUs are improving the catch up or vice versa? <laughs> well, we've definitely got eight gigabyte stagnation, don't we? I think it's more the fact that you buy a monitor and we've talked about buying, you know, investing in a higher quality monitor, make sure it's high refresh rate, good image quality. Because if you buy yourself a good quality monitor, you can generally hold on to that for a very, very long period of time, which I typically have mine for up to 10 years. So if you've sort of been the kind of person that spends three to maybe four, five hundred dollars on a GPU, let's say between three and four hundred dollars, because historically that's bought you a GPU that can certainly game at 1440p. Well, the 3060 Ti was advertised as a 1440p That's GPU. That's $400 so previous generation GPU. 5700 XT, 6700 XT were also advertised as 1440p. So let, let's say $400. You typically spend around $400 US on your GPU every you know three years or so, whatever it may be. You're a 1440p gamer. You've, you've invested, let's say, big money in a 1440p high ref refresh rate monitor. What do those things cost? Well, like? it's not even investing big money. For the last two years, you've been able to buy that monitor for $250 to $300. But even if you bought one six years ago. If you ago, bought one six years ago, you were spending $500. Yeah, so you spent $500 back then. It's still a good monitor, right? Yeah, of course. And you spent $400 on your GPU to, to use that monitor. And then you spent $400 the previous generation. You're like, well, I'm looking at upgrading now. You don't want to spend $400 to go backwards. That's true. So games get more demanding and GPUs get more powerful and sort of roughly the price to performance tier you're used to should stay relatively similar, you know, inflation or whatever. But it shouldn't. And again, when we talk about inflation, it's like, yeah, inflation's a thing. We don't think it's a myth. But it doesn't mean that you once once you spent $400 to get that level of performance, now you've got to spend 800 yeah, I mean, the the real so, thing, like, I mean, this question brings up, like, are games outpacing GPUs? Games obviously use more features, which is true. But I think the idea is that a typical $400 new generation GPU would provide the performance uplift that caters to those games' new graphics features. And it largely does. So, yeah. You Just got, the VRAM is the problem. You got your 1440p GPU previously, which played mm -hmm. games of that era using reasonable quality settings at good frame rates. Games get more demanding. The new GPU at the same price should be 20 to 30% faster, which means that the games, which are going to be roughly that much more intensive in the future, you know, it's still running in that tier. And that's how you encourage people to upgrade every so often with their GPU cycle. They buy a new product that allows them to get that performance boost to get back to where they were when they bought their previous card. Mm -hmm. So, you know, over time you sort of dip and then you get that big spike and dip and spike. And that's how those buying decisions go. And yeah, going backwards makes no sense. And I think as well, there's been all this discussion from NVIDIA and AMD about these GPUs are for 1080p gaming. So many gamers are 1080p gamers and so on. Let's look at the Steam survey. So look how many people are still 1080p gamers. And the Steam survey, while it is, I, I, I'm sure the numbers are to some degree accurate, you know, you have to take those numbers in the context that they're presented in, which is that it's not Every it's not a certain type of gamer. It's literally everyone with Steam installed. That's right, laptop gamers like, on integrated graphics. So you, and... can, you can you can look at the survey and look at the bottom percentage of of gamers that are surveyed on Steam, and you'll find things like ten percent of gamers do not have a CPU that supports AVX two. Now that means that a lot of modern games will not launch. So you're already talking about the very bottom percent of that entire group of people. Yep, they're playing Dota or something. That have games that don't, like modern games won't run. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people still with four and eight gigabytes of system memory, which again, it's a lot of games won't run. There's a significant percentage of Steam survey people with four CPU core CPUs. Again, a lot of games will not run on those yeah, and bits of hardware. And that's because, as you say, they're playing Dota. <laughs> and that's not justification for charging gamers $200 for a new quad core. It's not justification for charging gamers four hundred dollars for an eight gigabyte VRAM graphics card because most yes. gamers have eight gigabytes. Like it's it's the numbers have to be taken into context. Like okay, seventy percent of gamers still use ten eighty p displays, but what percentage of those ten eighty p gamers are playing games that someone realistically buying a GPU is buying it for? Like you're not. Buying... And how, what percentage of those gamers are, are looking at spending four hundred dollars on the next GPU and not like 
uh, a secondhand GPU or the yeah, cheapest thing exactly. they can get their hands on. Like a 1080p gamer who has a low end GPU who plays Dota or you know text based games or something and has Steam installed is not the target audience for a 4060 Ti. And the question is, of that 70%, how many people would realistically consider a 4060 Ti? And I'd say that there's a significant portion of those gamers who are not in, they're not just, they would never buy that product. Like they're on, they're gaming on a laptop, lots of laptops have 1080p displays or they're on low end hardware or whatever. They're just, they're just not that sort of gamer. Mm. And so the argument for resolution should always be, what does, what does someone who, is the target audience for this card and would realistically be buying a card like this, what are they going to be doing? You know, They're going to be playing the latest titles. They're going to be playing Jedi Survivor and The Last of Us. And yes, a lot of people will be playing multiplayer games, but the type of buyer who buys a 460 Chai for multiplayer isn't playing Dota. They're playing Fortnite. They're playing Overwatch. They're playing Call of Duty or Battlefield or those types of multiplayer games that do require a bit more horsepower than integrated graphics on a 1080p laptop. Mm -hmm. And I think that I find that marketing push really disingenuous where it's like, oh, we're justifying 1080p for this GPU because everyone on Steam has a 1080p display. But these days as a display reviewer, it's not like they're very cheap. Like it's their entry level displays yeah and, and and most people in my opinion should be upgrading to 1440p yeah. which you know for me i can see you and say everyone should upgrade to 1440p and people will say well i can't afford that and that's all all, all those reasons are fine but if you're on a 1080p display and you're tossing up do i buy a 4060 ti or a new 1440p display 100 percent, you should be buying the display 100 percent, upgrade yeah. to 1440p first Get yourself established with that beautiful high refresh rate, great resolution display, and then think about the GPU upgrade because it'll be a much more substantial upgrade. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are my thoughts on 1080p. 1080p is entry level. It's entry. Level. It's mainstream entry level stuff. Yeah, if you were making that justification for why you made a one hundred dollar four gigabyte graphics card, and you're yes. like, because most people are at 1080p and they're playing games like Dota, so we just made it. Pa it's like okay, fair enough. Like you've sort of. Yeah, like integrated graphics um, marketing has always been that, right? Mm. Where it's like we're targeting 720 and 1080p resolutions and people playing Dota. Yep. We want to know how good yeah. you can run a Dota. Again, it doesn't fly for a $400 US GPU. $100 or less, sure. Yeah, and I think that's that's the reality. And I think the painful thing was really seeing that these companies have gone backwards with this. Like what used to be a $400 tier is now a 1080p tier. Yeah, well, I've talked about... I'm sad you like Alex Jones going red in the face, punching the desk, <laughs> throwing paper everywhere, going, they're reconditioning the market, folks. Wake up. <laughs> so do you want to recant your comparison of yourself to Alex Jones or are you comfortable <laughs> with that? <laughs> was it, I was joking, but you know what I mean? Like I've said over and over and over again, <laughs> I'm just laughing. now. <laughs> We're going to do that gag. Um, yeah, NVIDIA's trying to recondition the market. They're, they're trying to recondition gamers into thinking that $400 GPUs are like low-end, basically entry-level. And AMD attempted that with the 6600. Was it XT that was advertised as 1080p as well? Like, even they were attempting... I just want to punch the desk and yell now, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can't help myself. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> End the question. <laughs> <laughs> 